welcome everyone to the meeting this evening. Um, I believe there's one person on the line that Sharon you need their name for. MK, if you could identify yourself. And take yourself off mute. Okay. I have a Jill Harvey and an MK. Yeah, hi, this is Mukesh Kumar. Thank you, sir. We just need to get your name down for the record. Yeah, thank you. So at this point, we have a number of items on the agenda, but let me note a couple amendments. Number one, or first, first amendment is that the consent agenda item has been removed. And we've added a boundary line, a, a boundary adjustment between Linda LeClerc at one LeClerc Woods and Dilton and Sandra Jarvis at 11 Lamore Road with a preliminary and final public hearing. That's the amendments for this evening. Um, as we get ready to roll, anybody in the audience tonight, make sure you've signed in, please, so we have your name on the record. I'd also at this point like to ask anyone who's going to be offering comment either online or from the room, from the audience, if you could please stand at home, I'll take your word for it. Um, but if you could, uh, do you swear that any testimony you present this evening will be truthful to the best of your abilities? I do. I do. Thank you. I do. Thank you. So the first item we have on our agenda is public comments. This is an opportunity for anyone in the public to offer commentary to the Planning Commission for items that are not on our agenda. Um, so this is if anyone has a, in the audience has a question. Oh, we also, before I get going into that, um, in the audience, we try to keep track of the participants, but if you need to say something during the public comment sections of the applications, please raise your hand using the reaction, the hand reaction underneath the, the raise hand option underneath reactions on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, if you don't have that or you can't figure it out, make sure you raise your hand or, or speak when we ask for folks who want to talk. I think I got that right. Okay. So once again, does anyone want to offer commentary, comments to the Planning Commission for items that are not on our agenda? Okay, moving on. The first item that we're hearing this evening is a site plan amendment public hearing. This is Peter Edelman doing business as Essex Resort Holdings. So as we move forward in this, staff, would you like to give us the rundown on your on the application and on your report? Sure. So, as you noted, the, um, the Essex Resort and Spa is proposing a new event center, um, sort of the front corner of their parcel. And they're also um, wanting to dissolve the boundary line between two parcels that are uh, under the same ownership. And there was also um, um, a small cottage that was a uh, in use, so also, you know, like a room that could be rented out, um, just like the other rooms at the end. But that has actually been removed from that application, so I think that'll be get followed up on a bit more. But initially, it was a part of it, and it actually it didn't fit the or didn't meet the setback front setback requirement. Uh, so it was removed. So the. Event center. Um, along with that comes just some uh, you know, site work. There's an extension of the pond that is already in the front of the parcel. There are some changes to uh, access and drives and parking. Uh, there's actually only very little additional parking that's added, and that's addressed in the staff report. Just is kind of this, that's the summary. And I think one of the main things with the access is that there's currently there are um, the, the front has um, an entrance and exit sort of di different uh, access points and it's being consolidated more into, into one spot to sort of actually kind of simplify that. Um, so the the 
background, as you know, there's been a, a lot on this parcel over time, a lot of development. And so most recently, in 2018, uh, there was something. And this is some of the most recent since then. Um, and as far as compliance with the zoning, um, with the dimensional requirements and the, the use and town plan compliance, all are fine. So, you know, assuming that um, cottage is removed, uh, the dimensional requirements are fine. So there's a difference in the staff notes. That's removed. Um, our public works had some comments uh, about traffic and asking for any new, if there's new development that takes place at the resort, that there would be a traffic analysis um, taken or undertaken. And so that's a condition. And I know that applicant has some questions about that, that if it's a small, small addition, maybe this cottage comes back in a different spot, would a whole traffic study need to be done for that? Maybe not. So maybe, maybe the condition could read a little differently just to say that it, it may be required So we can we can kind of massage that a little bit if you're, if you're interested. Um, uh, parking. Um, I have been analyzing the parking. Um, there could be more parking required for this new event center if you're just looking at the total number of, of spaces. However, uh, the applicant has said that there are two. Er there's an area that. Uh, is really underutilized for parking, and so they don't believe they need the extra parking. And uh, there's a section in the zoning regulation that does allow for flexibility for parking. And I would like to encourage, you know, staff would like to encourage the Planning Commission to not require the additional parking. They're they're providing seven spots, but not, not a whole lot more like they, they could be. So yeah, 108 spots in excess they, they are considering right now. So to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to add that extra spot more in more impervious area. Uh, they're providing landscaping and screening and lighting. Um, there'll be uh, water and sewer usage calculations, which actually will need to be revised uh, in the staff notes if that uh, the one bedroom cottage is removed. So that the total numbers would be reduced. So we have to look at that. Um, stormwater. Um, Public Works has some comments on that, but no, no real concerns as long as they're um, really following the rules essentially. But then there's also a question about a, a stormwater pipe um, that the applicant is. Um, amenable to clarifying. And uh, the applicant has been working with the fire chief on some of his questions. And there, there are a few maybe to be worked out, but the fire chief doesn't have any hesitation of going forward with the project as long as he's got the opportunity to continue to work with the applicant. And uh, that they'll um, be amenable to his suggestions. So the boundary adjustment is the other thing, and it's it's kind of a different boundary adjustment. We're not really moving a line as, well, I guess we are, we're just taking away a line. Uh, so there's no issues about uh, conformity uh, with lot size or, or making it a non-conforming lot. And I think that's, that's it. So getting to the... A potential additional finding by the Planning Commission um, that's on line 374, I believe, that you, you could add something in there about that there was a cottage proposed, um, and but it was removed as a part of this application. Uh, other than that, I don't know if we need to have mention of the cottage in other parts since it's not all be a part of the proposal, but it, it could be noted there. Could note that the plan should be amended to remove the cottage if you want uh, in, in the first condition. And 
and then in condition four, as I was noting before about the additional traffic analysis, uh, you might want to consider saying something instead of shall require, you might say may request, um, or if you want to figure out some other language. Um, that, that's considering if there is a, a small development that comes forward that maybe wouldn't be a traffic analysis. Public works might, might agree to that. However, you can leave it as is and um, can work with public works on that. Quick question on that, Kathy. Yes. The traffic study generally is if, if there's no additional, I would almost look at that as if there's no additional parking needs and the traffic wouldn't have it be expected to have an impact. So I'd almost mm -hmm. think that we could tie it to um, the parking requirements. If the parking, if the use comes in and drives additional parking, then we would need a traffic study. That's, that's, that's what came to mind as we were thinking. Uh, yeah, that could be a way to handle that. Good. Uh, questions for staff? Kathy, could we put up the plan on the screen? Sure. Just have the overview for folks that are online. There's somebody else doing that. No questions for staff. Um, I get a question. Okay. Um, so on line 327, um, the, the, um, in, in, the, in your final report, there have been recent studies that indicate that the 2017 Vermont State Stormwater Manual lacks on design guidance for gravel wetlands. And I, something about um, that the wetland soil composition being approved by the state is shown to be leaching phosphorus into the system. Uh, Public Works recommends that the applicant's engineer consider these recommendations when selecting a soil material for the gravel wetland. So I don't know, is that something that's been addressed, I guess? Um, I think we have that as a, oh, I meant to put that as a condition of not, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the plans here. On page 10, page 27. Yeah, that's my number nine for a condition. Yeah, you do have yeah. a condition. It's a, number nine is the condition. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, other than that, it looks good. Okay, let's pivot. Um, Apple, okay. Sure. Um, just when, when the time comes, we've had several more come on for, for the oath. Okay, you know who they were? Mm -hmm. More or less? More or less. Okay, we'll, we'll do the oath again as we get ready to open the public hearing. All right, thank you, Catherine, for the summary. Uh, my name is Sean Cunningham from O'Leary Burke. Um, I think Catherine gave a pretty good overview, but uh, we have a 9,300 square foot building, roughly, uh, proposed on a vacant portion of the Essex Resort parcel. Uh, Catherine, when you get a chance, can you go to actually sheet two first? Oh, sure. Um, as Catherine said, a part of it is also closing the exit portion uh, of the entry loop. Uh, we're also going to extend, maybe I'll wait for that. No problem. We're also going to uh, bump. the entry portion of the current access loop so the road is 26 feet wide we're also going to uh, extend that median to just facilitate two-way traffic a little bit better extending the curb so it'll be 13 foot uh, wide uh, lanes there for that road current two-way roads on the site are 24 feet part of the proposal also in order to get us a little bit more space for the building, we have uh, moved the access road essentially right in front of our canopy um, turnaround, uh, seven feet there, and kind of shifted the road a little bit. There was plenty of room to work with the parking lot existing. As Catherine noted, we also have a small parking area and turnaround for dumpsters, um, uh, service access road and seven uh, additional parking spaces, including one handicap. Um, stormwater 
water uh, sheet flows to catch basins and grass swales as collected and sent to a proposed gravel wetland. Um, we are good with the condition to uh, try to use native soils instead of the wetland plant mix to uh, limit the phosphorus. Uh, there's also going to be some direct connections to the catch basins from uh, roof drains that will go straight to the stormwater system. Part of the proposal also, as Catherine mentioned, is uh, reshaping the existing uh, human constructed pond and also extending it. So we're going to be impacting the edge, retaining it, and then extending it essentially along the length of the building. We're also going to provide some landscaping on the other side of the extended pond to kind of screen our stormwater system. Any, any concerns with any of the conditions? Um, yeah, I think the only one was the, uh, what Catherine, Catherine brought up. Um, was, number four. All right. It sounds like there's, there's, we, we probably can have an opportunity to come up with it. Yeah, I think a discretion-based condition there, depending on size and impact, which I, I'm sure Aaron was would be amenable to, or kind of maybe what he meant anyway. But okay, questions for the applicant, commissioners. Okay, John, good. Patty, I'm good. hearing. Sharon, let me know that there was some new attendees online. So any folks that were online prior to or came online after the meeting had started, I'm going to ask, I'm going to repeat the oath and I'd like you to please respond in the affirmative. Okay, well, you're not allowed. You had the opportunity, you're not allowed. You can't say anything. Come on. Just make the gentleman Anybody, uh, do you swear that any testimony you present this evening will be truthful to the best of your abilities? I do. I do. Thank you. And I do have just a couple of names. Ken, if I could have a last name. It's Keft, K I E F T. Thank you. And I think I had, it just says iPhone. So if somebody's calling me in from an iPhone, to Okay, so at this stage, I would take a motion to open the public hearing. I move we open the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 4-0. Public hearing is open. So at this point, folks, um, I would, I'm trying to get this so I can have a full set of zoom here. Anybody who would like to ask a question of the commission or ask a question about this application, please raise your hand. Let me see. I'll recognize you. Direct your questions to the, to the board, and then we'll pull in staff or applicant as appropriate as needed. Oh, not you. <laughs> Please go ahead. Can she take the uh, guys? Yeah. You want me to? You can slide right up. I'll slide up. Three chairs. Okay, very well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chrissy Gilliam. I live at 18 Freeman Woods in Unit 4. Um, a couple of questions I just had, or maybe wonders, is living on Freeman Woods now, that road is getting really torn up with the amount of traffic that is coming through there, the larger vehicles coming into and out of um, the inn. I think it's just a road that was never made for that much weight. So there are, every year, there's quite a few potholes, especially after the winter. So wondering about um, any thought around beefing up that road um, to support all the traffic coming in and out. I know for us, we have the 17 units at the end of the road, and then between the 55 plus, the memory care, and the, um, the uh, 
nursing care that's there as well. Um, and then just thinking about the service side of the building for those that are residents there. I know we, we see the service side, if you will, of the Essex, and you've done some great work there along the fence line and things like that, but just wondering about what the service side of the building, the new building, would look like. And um, I heard about the screening of, of plants and things like that, but it would be nice to give some thought to what that might look like for the residents in that area. Um, and uh, the other one was, and I talked with the town about this, they said that their hands are tied on it, but a stop sign possibly on the service entrance. Uh, there are a lot of people that do use that, whether it's um, people that work at the inn or guests there, and they often don't even stop. So there's been several times that many of us at the end of that street have either had to come to a quick stop or been almost T-boned by people coming out of that road. The town had said that it's not their property, so they won't put a stop sign there. Um, but it might just be a, a nice gesture to have that there to give people a, a pause before coming out onto the Freeman Woods. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Is that, is, is that road town road? That's a town road. So that so, the condition not really road, for us. The condition goes to public works. Um, and we have any did, did been any feedback from Aaron on on condition or degradation of uh, over time? Um, it wouldn't come up as a part of this review. No, and I agree, but I question it is Freeman Woods is, is the town road, but is, is, is she talking about coming off your private lot? She originally was talking about Freeman Woods, the, the quality of the road currently. Yeah. Um, then she had a question about uh, adding a stop sign, I believe, next to the new building. Um, who were the, the existing in between? Um, the parking lot that is the 55 plus and in the residences your and the Essex residence. Yeah, so yeah. it's that 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 access road that's always being used. But that okay. again, I don't know if that's the town said it's it's not there. So if it's coming out of that building, that would be on. That's not the right? No, that would be well depending on where it was. Right. right. So I think that's something. That so there's a. Are you talking about where Catherine's pointing at the crosswalk right now? Yes. Okay. She's talking about coming out of there. Yeah. So we can talk about that. Um, and you know, looking at the building, I'm not sure what the service side of the building would be considered on this because it looks like it's fifth. Service side will be the Freeman Woods facing side. And it'll look just like this. Uh, with some with a utility pad in the middle. Okay. The middle of the screen. Great. Uh, nicely with some green. Perfect. And then you know we're gonna maintaining most of that wooden wooden edge okay. um, by the road and then where we where it's a little bit cleared out a little yeah, bit where now. it's been cleared yeah. where that's yeah. where we're adding landscape. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to go back to sheet two sure it's not I heard a little voice from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so you good? I mean that's yeah, speed questions? limit I would have to talk to the town about, right? On speed that limit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the condition of the road, actually, is what okay. we're finding out. I mean, that's okay. all, since it's a public road. Does anyone else have any questions on this application? Now's the time. Anybody in the audience? Okay, hearing none at this point, I'm going to bring it back to the table. Commissioners, thoughts on this? I'm good with it. So I guess I, I do have a question, given that that service entrance is is not part of the new development, do we even have the right to ask about a stop sign? I mean, I, I believe, I agree that it would be a good little gesture, um, but do we even have the right to make it a consideration in, on this application? I would say no, and that they do work with public works. But it's not on public, it's not on... It's private stop signs. Well, if I for. thought that I saw you say that it was right off from Freeman Woods. It, it right. could be, depending on where you put it. Okay. So if they're putting it right on Freeman Woods, that's a town okay. public works question. If it's coming off the private lot. Right, if it's more on our property. Now would be a condition. If it's in, in, on your Okay. And I, I would say that it could be a condition that you would put because cars will be parking over there going in and out of that entrance. Um, that's the intent that they would. 
So would you have a, a, would you be adverse to putting a stop sign there? Similar to what we did over by the bank. No, no. Um, maybe just the, the, the look of the stop sign you might want to adapt something so it's not uh, too commercial. If he was out of the town right away, I think he could do something somewhat creative looking as long as it still had the traditional shape and you know, color. So that's the question is whether it's in the it's <clears throat> still in the right of way or it's closer and it's actually on the, the private and non public part of the property. And it's not there so we so we could put a condition that says a stop sign is required and the applicant should work with public works to determine the best placement of it. It's on the I mean, public works is probably gonna say you buy it and put it on your side, but yeah, he doesn't if that's not the best place for it. I don't know, is there is there is there an appropriate location compared to a crosswalk? Should it be on one side of the crosswalk or another? And that might drive the placement of it. Do we have a crosswalk? You got one yes. on the map. Yeah, we have a we have a sidewalk across. My my question would be, what's the what's the typical public works spec when you have a private road intersecting uh, public right of way? What is what is, it, what, is the, what is the rule? Is there like you don't have to put a stop sign or you need one? Yeah. So I believe there is a certain spec, so the creativity of how it looks might have to be discussed with public works as well. has been asked in the past, I don't know if it was from, from you, but it, it, you know, I had a, had a conversation in the past years with Public Works and the answer was a, a stop sign, at least at that time, was not, they were not going to put money. So let's just make it a condition of, of this. If you guys are, if you're amenable to that, let's just make it a condition of this that we that you put a stop sign on that service road as an exit on the Freeman Woods. Sure. And if you want to have a discussion with Public Works, or about, to work with Public Works about feasibility or placement. Sure. Placement. Okay. I mean, I just, I think it's re legitimate. It, it, it is it is an exit from the property and it is not just a service exit so no i can definitely see people just pulling out that yeah. and, and so plus a lot of people break yeah. and stuff to identify it as a safety mm -hmm. issue yeah it's a safety yeah. issue a lot of people uh, break and walk and do their yeah absolutely so commissioners what other questions do we have at this point you're good dave john good. you're good yeah. patty i'm good so one more time to the audience does anyone have any questions I'm looking online I don't see any hands raised I don't hear anybody saying anything with that I'll take a motion to close the public hearing so moved I'll second. moved by John seconded by Patty all those in favor aye, aye. 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 opposed motion carries 4-0 public hearing is closed um, Thank you. are we who's ready to make a motion on this John Okay. I've got it. I've got it. I'm ready to go. Okay. Well, sorry, it's burning. He's, I'm trying to. I, you know, I didn't want to disappoint you. Dave's the move. That's uh, just. I've got it. I'll second it. How's that? When the time comes. All right. So, Patty, do you? What's your? So, one question on the um, for the commission on on the kicking off of a, a traffic study. Would you be amenable rather than just a flat out? Could we say something like anything that adds more than two vehicle trip ends would trigger a traffic study or pick a number of vehicle trip ends, not make it just an open? Yeah, the, the town threshold is 10. But, oh, well, that's helpful. However, they've been getting a little. What's staff's preference on that rather than just keeping it, you know, wide open? I would uh, I would offer that we that we tie it leaving it open but say significant change in use significant change in parking requirements or trip ends just list some of the options it may require a traffic study why even have that condition in there if we already have something in the regs that says that if 10 v VTEs are added, it 
automatically triggers a traffic study. I mean, if, if I, I agree. I don't think in reading it again, I don't think you need a condition. You know, as new development takes place, they're going to have to come back before you for a site plan. And even if it's a every time so so yeah if they feel like the traffic studies needed they're going to say we're not comfortable with their estimates we want a traffic study i think this was more like give them a head stop that traffic study could be coming your way depending if you're so that could be put in the beat us put that in the strike it okay that's where i'm at strike four so give me a second so with the answer on the um, question on the 18-inch stormwater pipe. Clarifying the status, or is that just going to happen as a condition? I would say... Right now. It is. It it's is. a 1A. So it just says oh, right. plans to clarify. So are we okay just leaving that? I, I think that's fine. Okay. All right. Then I think I'm ready. So I'm going to move we approve the site plan amendment um, for Peter Edelman doing businesses, Essex Resort Holdings, uh, proposing to dissolve the 0.65 acre boundary line with lands owned by EuroWest Retail Partners and develop a 9,000 square foot resort event center um, for the property located at 70 Essex Way in the mixed unit development, plan unit development, MXDPUD, MXD subzone, tax map 93, parcel one, staff report uh, with the following changes. So rather than just give you guys carte blanche, I'm just going to go through them just so everyone's on the same page. Uh, so line 28, we're going to strike and small cottage. Uh, line 33, 34, we're going to strike uh, the requirement not met is the front setback. We'll strike that whole sentence. Line 49 and 50, we're going to strike the sentence that says, as part of this proposal, the one bedroom cottage is also proposed near the event center. Lines 162 through 168, all referring to the cottage. We're going to strike those. Can you just slow down? 162 to? 162 to 168. Okay. The proposed one bedroom cottage is located within the required. We'll strike that whole paragraph. Can I jump in with just one yep. change too? So the, the table, the minimum front setback, um, which should be changed from 38 to 90. Thank you. For yep, I'll take that. Thank you. Line 289, we're going to strike C, one bedroom cottage at 140 gallons per day, change the total to 560 gallons per day. Line 294 to 296, we're going to strike the sentence that says fees will be calculated separately, that whole sentence. So, um, so that is, that's in a finding, or, and that's a um, quote from what public work said to you, am I right, am I right, place number two? I'm sorry, I was, yeah, where are you? Yeah, that's public works. Those are their comments, so I don't think you should be doing what they put forth for you to consider. I think it's okay. We don't have to quote them verbatim, so we're not changing their words. We're just striking what's in there. So I think it's okay to take that out. So can, can you tell me what it is? Answer. Striking uh, the sentence that starts fees will be calculated separately yeah. for the event mm -hmm. size. So it's two ninety four to two ninety six. Starting at three oh one, we're going to take out the one bedroom cottage water and sewer fees.
Planning Commission findings, we're just going to note uh, this is new language. At the start of the presentation of the application, staff made the commission aware that the applicant has withdrawn the request to construct the cottage as it did not meet the current zoning setback requirements. The commission has requested that staff remove references to the cottage from the staff report. So just capture both of those. Uh, condition four, we're going to strike. Back to the finding? Yeah. Can we add something in there to say we're requesting a stop sign? Uh, I've got a new condition for that. But just a finding? Oh. Because we don't we usually have a finding. Yeah. So what do you want that to say? Just that the PC recognizes the safety concerns and is requiring a stop sign on the service road as it exits onto Freeman Woods. recognize safety concerns as the service road exits on the Freeman Woods and agrees a stop sign is warranted. Right. And then new condition, um, I guess it will be new, it doesn't matter, I'll let you number it. Uh, applicants shall work with Public Works to determine the best location and placement for the applicant to install a stop sign um, onto Freeman Woods, or service entrance onto Freeman Woods. all I have if anyone wants to poke at it. I'll second it. Dave seconded by John. Is there initial, any additional discussion, thoughts, questions? So the stop sign's going to be here. At the end of the service road, where oh. it intersects three new roads oh, okay. off of the see. original, um, so off the original building. Oh. Existing service road. David, are you working from the PDF file? A word. A word. I'm going to give it to you, the whole thing. I know. Thanks. I just wanted to know how I should print mine out because my lines were different than your lines. Okay, with that, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> She's going to stay here. <laughs> she just got good scratches. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She's going to phone me up. Mine don't have, well, you'll figure it out. Mine don't have, I always use the light and it works like when yeah, I send you my comments with it. All of that, yeah. 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 Stuff, those are always going to be the yellow. Yeah. So you're going to get it just like that. Yeah. 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 Do what you want with it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, shoot, you get the next one. Sorry, buddy. Oh, okay. Next up, next item on the agenda, boundary adjustment between Linda LeClerc and Dalton and Sandra Jarvis. This is a preliminary and final public hearing. So, staff, ready to rock and roll on this? The applicant is proposing a uh, plan unit development residential on um, lot 20, that's 103 and a half acres um, on, on the um, Fairwoods um, master plan. And their, this particular PUD is eight units, and they're small. Do you want me to pull up the site plan while yeah. I'm talking? Yeah. to um, even give that land to the 
town. Uh, and let's see, we're also proposing a boundary adjustment with the Jarvis parcel, uh, which is up in the front. It's so sticky over here. So it's an equal swap of land, so it's allowing for um, additional air buffer area in between the development and the Jarvis parcel, and allowing down here some area for some um, for some stormwater. Uh, I don't have a, that plan pulled up, so it's a little hard to see exactly where that land is being um, conveyed. Can pull that up if you want to take a look at that. So this is this PUD is a part of a larger master plan. So there's been quite a bit of development over time on this parcel, and we're nearing the end of what can be built. And I think the applicant can talk to that a little bit more. So you could see this uh, this master plan come back at some point with a, a little bit more development. So looking at the staff report, um, just in a little bit more detail. Um, so I said before it was eight lots, and that includes the, the open space lot as well as the um, seven additional residential lots. And just looking through some things that I highlighted, I don't really need to go through all of the findings here. So the going into the preservation of natural and scenic features, there is a wetland on the parcel and that is back further off of where this plane is showing, but that is part of the open space land that would be preserved, which is great. Um, so street trees is another issue, uh, not much of an issue, but there's a suggestion to make a change in the type of street trees that are being proposed and potentially also moving one of the street trees from within the cul-de-sac, uh, just so it is not away or not on top of the sewer line uh, that's being proposed. So the street that's being proposed would be a new public street um, named Kodiak Lane, potentially. And it, the street itself does meet the requirements. Um, public Works does have a couple comments uh, related to, to traffic and um, the geometry of the road. And there's a suggestion um, to relocate the the approach to the bridge, and I think probably uh, the applicant did get more into the, the detail and, and point that out, but they are amenable to work with the town and with public works on this, which is good. Um, so I don't think we'll have any problems there. Um, there will be a well impact fee that's going to be um, required, but sort of in, in line with this, working with the approach to the bridge, there could be a reduction in the fee that to um, to help the, the site lines and um, approach to the, the bridge. So that's work, a good thing that's at, we're working with the town, or the applicants working with the town on this, on the realignment. Um, so the open space, um, there's a proposed footpath that's shown on the plans, and it actually doesn't show actually on this one, but it goes all the way back. I think when, this is before my time on the planning commission, I think when this was here for sketch plan, there was discussion about that, and was that really feasible? Um, would it be used? Is it safe to be used? Um, sounds like there was agreement that it should stay on the plans. I think the applicant would like to talk about that a little bit more tonight, but maybe Maybe it doesn't need to be required. Would it ever really hook up? Um, and if if it is something that the planning commission would like, do we? Do, it, do, there's no real connection for it now. So would we actually need the easement? Could it be something in the future that the 
town reserves the right to get an easement. Um, it really depends on how you feel about this and, and what you feel like is, is best um, for this area. I think on the, our town plan shows a connection along there, but I think it's more along the surf as opposed to up on, up on top of the ridge where it is. The applicant's proposing private water and wastewater systems, and Public Works has some comments about that. And as long as the applicant um, agrees to these conditions that Public Works has stated uh, that the system should work and that you're supportive of it. Uh, as, as, uh, excuse me, along with the stormwater management, um, as long as these conditions are followed to be fine with that. Um, and the boundary adjustment meets all dimensional requirements, so there's no, no issues there. And I think that's it. On staff side. Any questions for staff? Again, nice explanation. Um, it's an A unit PUD, uh, proposed public road, 24 feet wide, 18 feet uh, at a circle that would be a one way. Um, shared uh, water system, uh, shared septic system. There's a pre treatment unit for uh, every two units for the septic. Okay with the conditions on the street trees, replacing some of the Japanese lilacs and trying to move uh, all of them out of the right of way. The uh, road realignment, we are uh, amenable to. There is a plat, uh, plat that we provided shows an easement, easement E5. It's called a proposed highway easement to the town of Essex Highway View easement. I think this was main, mainly for clearing. Uh, seems like now they're asking to try to uh, realign the road, which we are okay with upgrading that easement uh, for a permanent slope right away, and not right away, uh, slope road easement. Uh, we just want to point out that there is an existing uh, wastewater easement for the Jarvis parcel. There, uh, we believe we can put the easement over that easement, but it would be up to Public Works just to confirm that they meet the wastewater regulations. And they do the road essentially. And this step, excuse me, that right to the right of way you're talking about is for the Gents Road pro bridge approach, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, for the bridge and the realignment of uh, Gentis and Lamar. Okay, just check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the pedestrian easement, uh, there's been a lot of talk with that over the years. Um, Patrick and I believe it was kind of a few years back, it was kind of put to rest that we weren't going to have it, and then it uh, came back up. Um, essentially, it seems like most of the talks is that it's never going to be built on. Um, I have a picture that I took when I was out there doing some surveying um, of, the, of the path that it would have to take to be built on. It's probably about a 60 or 70 foot cliff, basically. Um, but we know it's, you know it's your decision whether or not you need to take it. If we do need to take it, we, as Catherine said, um, we would love to, if you considered a condition where it's an approval condition that an easement could be executed when the town says they want to execute it and act on the land to actually put a path in. Uh, Patrick has, uh, currently he has a lot of trespassing, loitering, camping, um, bonfires on his father's grave, uh, things like that up there. And uh, he doesn't want to uh, draw more attention and have more opportunity for that uh, on his land. So yeah, that's the path. Um, can't see them great from there, but there's some pink flagging that's the approximate property line. So our easement currently on the plan is that line is the property. So that line and 20 feet to the left is this pedestrian easement. And 
that on condition 12, we would just like it changed to say um, that the payment, whatever the payment uh, to public works for the traffic impact uh, turns out to be, it sounds like it's going to be almost negligible just because we're working with them, but uh, as public works suggested, they'd be okay for it to be delayed till after the first CO, so we would just like to have that added to condition 12. You're including the Gentis Road approach? Bridge approach and yeah. that's included in that. Yeah, yeah they kind of summed it all up in their uh, memo. Okay. I think they said they came up to a fee of eight hundred dollars, so it's you know, it's almost negligible. But okay. all good. Yeah. I think so. Questions for applicant. I've got one for I got one for staff. Uh, going back to the draft language that we put into our findings, um, the first waiver I, I, I don't I don't have any concerns with waiving the requirement for site plan review and so forth. Um, the next one I'm just I think this will come into play again, but I, I'm wondering if we should strike the wave since this is a PUD. I think instead of wave, I think we should acknowledge use you know the term the, the, the planning commission accepts as part of the PUD recommendation a, a lessening of the requirements or something to that effect so that because it's not a waiver it's it's again this is goes back to for using a, a PUD to enable um, the waiver is outside and this is how PUDs are supposed to use I don't see it as a waiver. David, chew on that. The Planning Commission acknowledges a reduction to the minimum lot front. You can just pick it up from there. Yeah, it's it's a it's basically due to it's a PUD. I mean, we got. I think we have to start recognizing, and acknowledging what the PUD is providing, not just that we're waiving the requirements because we're not. We're we're trying to use PUD as it's, as it's intended, and it's not outside of the. It's not, it's not a waiver. Yeah, there's language in the PUD section that allows for that creativity and flexibility. And, and if we can pull it from there, even just to say that it's you know, an acknowledgement of whatever. The commission acknowledges the application is a PUD and the name of the lot just that that design provisions enable the creation. Whatever we got for language, I mean, we've got we've got language to reflect. It's just a, let's let's start being let's start doing this the way we're trying to use it. It might help us when we're trying to evaluate these when they're coming in. With no more, with no questions for staff or applicant at this point, I would take a motion to open the public hearing. John, so moved, Patty. Second. See how easy that was. <laughs> Moved by John, seconded by Patty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Public hearing is open. So, as with the last application, if anyone wants to offer commentary or ask questions, raise your hands either in the room or virtually on Zoom. Ma'am, in the back, to the left. Can we come up to the front? Yes, yes please. Commission. I'm Brittany Cressetti. I am owner of 19 Discovery Road and a butter of uh, the LeClaire property. Good evening. Thank you for having us. My name is Chelsea Cressetti. I also reside at 19 Discovery Road. We uh, absolutely respect the right of, of the LeClaires um, to do what, what they please with their property. We've been uh, abutting the property for nearly 40 years and we absolutely love it. We love our property. However, it's not even listed on the chart here. Um, but we do have a number of questions and concerns with the plan. Um, you know, we're not opposed to change, but we have noticed certain degradation of the natural resources as um, development has accelerated. 
we also have had certain past agreements approved by this body in the past that we feel our, our understanding is that they're a little bit completely ignored in the current planning of the master plan. So my sister will go through some of our questions, um, uh, excuse our naivety and some of our concerns. Yeah, so I have a few um, kind of large bullets and then sub points underneath them. Um, one of them being the land and open space. Um, so from the May sketch plan that was approved, um, the lines three, uh, 435 to 440 were removed in this uh, final plan, which kind of discussed the issue um, you know, you got the 4.7 acre lot down here and then the open space up there. There's just no connectivity between the two, so it's confusing to me how, one, that's being allowed to be used as calculation of the PUD, um, and then what is the actual benefit of having that open space if the residents at this PUD would not be able to actually access it. Um, and as they mentioned, it's a 40, 40 to 70 foot cliff, whatever it might be to get up there. Um, which is, as it is currently, nearly impossible. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah, so then one of the questions I also have is there's multiple findings listed out in this plan um, that are nowhere to be found in any of the documents that are available online. Um, or in any of these plans. So some of them list, these are the findings that allow for this to happen, but they're not available to us to see what those were. Such as? Um, Every single one. Finding yeah. In the, in the so finding reference uh, 3B7 for open space, uh, 4C3 for the footprint lots, 3G, 2G, 3E. So um, those are all references to our um, zoning and subdivision regs? Okay. So, yeah. so whenever you see a reference like that, it's referencing our our regulations, that the enabling language that basically is what staff and the applicant use to determine what they can and can't do. Okay. Um, on the rental units being versus footprint lots, um, in the May 2020 sketch plan approval, um, we're using saying this is substantially the same as the approved uh, sketch plan. I would argue that changing it from rental to footprint lots is not substantially the same. Um, in the May 2020 meeting, everything was referenced as a um, rental unit, and that was the original sketch approval that is referenced in this final plan. Um, in the May 2020 sketch plan approval, it still references rental units and no mention of footprint lots. Um, at least five times it mentions the rentals. And then in lines 404 to 423, it discusses uh, the rental units and why it does not meet regulations for footprint lots. Um, and then on line 418, it goes on to explain that it is impossible to meet these requirements to be able to be sold as footprint lots. Um, so we have questions as to why we are now, and like I said, we're not waiving it, but um, allowing that to be utilized when over the last 10 years it's been as uh, approved as rental units. Um, and it just goes on to say how it doesn't meet the setback or um, multiple other requirements um, in there. And then I have multiple questions on the master plan as well, since that's being um, looked at in conjunction with this. Um, as Chelsea mentioned, um, on table, on the table on page three, that is inaccurate and incomplete. Um, there's multiple errors on that. Um, within here, on line 91 to 94, um, I'd like it to be noted that during that 2013 meeting, um, it was approved that the uh, private road, LeClaire Woods, would only be allowed to be utilized by three houses um, as that goes over my property. Um, and that is furtherly discussed in the August minutes um, in multiple 
references there. Um, I think I would also like it to be stipulated that um, access to the open space um, would not be able to utilize LeClaire Woods as um, obviously that would be more than three houses using that. Um, and then there is one reference to the LeClaire Woods uh, private drive being able to be utilized by four houses and I would like that to be corrected to three. Um, we also question if this has been utilized, uh, reviewed or permitted under Act 250, um, and if not, why that would not fall under that. Um, and then on the master plan as well, recently there was approval to add an antenna or something tower up there. It's not uh, listed in the master plan sketch um, drawing at all, and I believe there's a requirement for uh, setback, and I think it's leased land, so I feel like that should be also um, documented on there as well. We can start with those. What else you got? I want to have a full list. Do you got more to go? Let's bring. Let's put it all out. Um, not, it, it doesn't work well to do. You know, no, I think time. that I, that is. Do you have any other ones? Mm -hmm. No, those are our questions. Thank you. Don't go away. No, yeah, we're, we're, oh. <laughs> we're not done. Okay. Chewing on it. Um, one of the things I think we can talk about right now is the open space. You, you asked about access and so forth, and that obviously was recognized as a question that we're still going to be working on. So. Yep. Um, there was just extensive discussion in the May. Rem remember also, or realize that sketch plan that was done is a sketch plan. It's one phase, and you know, things things can change between yeah, no, sketch and preliminary. They can be dropped. They can be added. So even if something was approved, and I've been here for most of the plan submissions, and none of them to date have met requirements. So even at sketch plan, there were, there were serious concerns either from Public Works or from the Planning Commission. And I think the applicant is, is well aware. And what they brought forward today, or for this meeting, is a significant change in what they had before. Whether it's rental or footprint lot, I mean, that's, that's not so relevant um, to the review. It really is the, it's the layout and the road. And Public Works has been a key a key component of the drive and the access, which has been the primary limiter up to this point um, to putting in uh, the development as requested. I think the initial, the initial request had a hammerhead turn, um, more units and a hammerhead turn. And this is a reduced units with a loop road. Public Works is behind it. So you know, recognize that a lot of the concerns are based on this lot. Catherine, do you have any anything come to mind for responses at this stage? Uh, so just a reminder, too, that it's a master plan for the whole parcel, mm -hmm. not just the, this portion here of the PUD. And so the open space is um, accessible to all the, the units, but the plan is to turn that over to the town, actually, for more conservation purposes, and not necessarily for public access or recreation. It's not really well suited for that with the wetland. And, um, I think there's some trees there that are worth preserving. For preserving. Speak to the cell tower that went through the public utility commission. Well, I, I got a second here. I'm just I'm looking at where we're. I want to finish up on the master plan piece. And, I mean, we're not, the master plan hasn't been submitted for review or adjustment amendment. Correct. I mean, we're working out from the master plan as it exists. We're not. There are no changes to the master plan as proposed in this application. Not no. So that more or less takes the master plan off from the table tonight. That is a, a, another plan that would have to be brought forward in amendment. 
like specifically put towards it. So just oh, for clarity. You. That's helpful. Um, Sharon. So I just wanted to say that the cell tower um, bypasses local zoning, local zoning, according to our exemption that because it went through the public utility commission. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to have our our eyes on it and meet our regs. Okay. So there's a question about Act 250. I turn to the engineers. I think I know that you have to have 10 units and I think yeah. Act 250 requirement is 10 units um, all at once, or clumps of units that equal 10 within five years. So it's been six, seven years since Patrick did anything. So we're not in Act 250. Units? Sorry. Units or division of actual land? Nope. Uh, it's units. Uh, so it's either units or lots. Right. So we're doing footprint lots, but it's not a combination of the two. So you don't add units and lots. It's not eight footprint lots and eight units is 16. They're counted separately. So it's eight units and nine lots, because there's the remaining land. So either way, we're under 10. The remaining lands. I'm curious about the shed that's on there. Is that staying in the remaining lands? Yeah. Not its own separate and be part of the actual association <coughs> land. That's correct. Okay. <coughs> so you called out a number of them. I'm, I'm going to call them clerical, not to dismiss them, but they were more fine tuning, I, I feel. Well, um, I think details matter, so I just wanted to make sure that there are certain things. Can we can we just go back to Act 250? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just I'm just confused. This is why. Just this is anecdotal. We've lived there for 38 years and grew up with six people in our house, and we've never run out of water once. And we have a well, and we have six people, and we never have, we now have to count how many times we've done laundry, run the dishwasher, taken a shower. We run out of water every summer multiple times. And I can't imagine that's not due to development on you know what I, I think is mostly ridge, ridge line um, from, from new construction. So that that is what makes me more curious about Act 250. Um, you know, we have to now get quotes to dig a new well um, or frack our well. And that's just the two of us living there. And, and it's very, very, very frustrating. We have a list of when we have to go out and drop an ice cube into the well to see if we can, you know, do a, another load of laundry. We can't, you know, water the lawn. We can't, you know, hose down the house. Um, we, will, we will run out of water. We ran out of water for four days this summer. Um, and it's and it's frustrating and it's sad to us. So, if there is any way that we could get an Act 250 study, we would be really appreciative of it. Of it. So we don't we don't have any control over Act 250. We, that's that's triggered by whatever the development rules are. And, and anything that has to do with your with your water or the hydrology mm -hmm. is the engineers and the state. So there's no way that there's not it's not anything the town can do anything about it. Um, and as long as you're being anecdotal, my well is running dry. Nobody <coughs> develops around my house. I think everybody's wells are suffering a little bit. It's it's a climate thing as well. That's my guess. And I'm not a hydrologist. I'm not, not an our new neighbor's well is not dry. So um, right. So you don't, you never know. Could be when right. they, they did the cut for 289. Who knows? That's exactly right. So um, my my your best bet would be if you have concerns like that is to is to turn to the state because they're going to be the ones that help you. Am I right about that, Ryan? Uh, yes, and that's separate from Act 250. Yeah. So we're going to get a WW permit uh, whether we're Act 250. Or not. What's it? What's we have? Wastewater. wastewater. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate you listening to that, even though there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, it's really, it's really out of our hands. Okay.
Patrick, you'd like to add something? Just to add, we, as a condition of the wastewater permit, we actually have an Act 250 exemption letter from the state saying we are not going to make you go through Act 250 for these units. Yeah. And we already have our wastewater permit. So they've already reviewed it. They always do. I'm just going down through the, the water and sewer requirements. It's all on site, so... So you referred to the um, degradation of natural resources. What, do you, what were you referring to with that? What, what, do you, what is your the, the, the water table. That's really what you're talking about as a natural? OK. It's not anything more than that? No, no, no. no. OK. May not hit everything that you're all of your concerns, but have we have we touched on the major ones at this stage? Um, I think so. So, are you saying the master plan is not going to be finally approved tonight? I think that's our you know our major We're question. We're not touching the master plan tonight. It's okay. Not, yeah, it is what it is at this point. It's not changing. Okay. Okay. Is that what we wanted? Yeah, I think I would. I think it would be helpful for me to have at least it clarified in there that um, that road is only to be accessed by three houses. It states in there as four, um, and there was extensive discussion and agreement upon it being only allowed to be utilized by three houses. Are you talking about the beginning section where it goes through the historical applications? Yeah, and then it also... Um, does say it again in here um, on line 155. Yeah. Not, was that a, is that a private road? Is saying that it's private road. It's private. It goes across. Uh, no, that's not true. It was moved. It was moved? Yeah, you moved it for your father. No, you didn't. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no debate. <laughs> okay. No I, debate. I would say I moved the road as part of the conditions of not having to do the screening. Was I moved it off of your father's yeah. property? Yeah. That's why we didn't have to do the screening trees. And we have a survey. So that is a, that is an issue separate from this, and as such, we're not going to be addressing the specifics of that because I do believe that I do believe you came back in. There was an application. I don't remember if it was Paul or you, Brian, that was on the part uh, before us to make adjustments, and that was probably around the time of the tower. Before, before the tower. Yes, I guess that was Paul. Okay. It was Paul. Maybe you weren't out of school yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. He wants you to. Hear, so go ahead. I'm tempted. Um, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Can Can we talk about the footprint lot issue that um, Brittany raised? I'm curious about that too. Why is it rental versus footprint? Why are we talking about it that way? Yeah, well, because I mean, what's referenced in this what's going on? What's referenced in the uh, staff report talks about um, it site specifically six point eight. Um, Basically, uh, G5, but G5 references multifamily townhouse developments. So, curious how we got to footprint lots. Brian? 
So I, I think that regulation we've run into a few times that basically says if you're going to create a footprint lot in Essex, it's got to be for a multifamily. So duplex, triplex. But I think the way we've, we've uh, interpreted that in the past for single families is part of the PUD, it's part of the flexibility requirement of footprint lots for single family. We did it for uh, Chase Gardens, Streamside, uh, Pinewood, so numerous uh, examples of the board using that flexibility for footprint lots on single family. Yeah, I, I think I'm in agreement with you that the flexibility is there because in F, you know, of 6.8. 6.8G. F allows you to, it says planning commission may authorize a reduction in the minimum lot size, minimum lot area per dwelling normally required, but the only discussion of footprint lots within the TUDs is for that multifamily townhouse. I know we've had this discussion back and forth, but I'm not sure we want to call these things footprint lots. I'm not sure we have the ability to I don't believe, and maybe I've said this before in the past, I don't believe we have the authority to grant a footprint lot to anything other than a multifamily dwelling. Does it have to do with frontage uh, uh, requirements, though? In part. I mean, the PUD's whole point of a PUD is to get that flexibility on density and lot size. Because uh, uh, it says specifically zoning regulation section 6.8 G5 a lot only allows for the creation of footprint lots without frontage or for multi-unit townhouse dwellings, which must contain at least two dwelling units arranged to include rooms on two or more contiguous floors as defined in zoning regulation section 8. Where does that leave us? How, how much we wanted to think that, but so you have done it in the past with um, on Chapin Road. I can't think of breaking out on that new road. Those units. One that uh, that Sterling did. Yes, so they are, they are multi units, but one was a single unit. Um, I believe Tom Chase and actually yeah, have one. Yeah. Right. Tom Chase has a single unit. He does have one last unit he just finished. Yeah. Uh, so Streamside Washington Circle the Loop. Those are all footprint lots. Also, all single family footprint lots. And I would just say that I think you would want to call them footprint lots rather than just lots because they've always been kind of interpreted in every town as a different way that they use them. Some zoning regs don't address them at all because they understand they're basically just for financing purposes. The banks want to see that you own the property underneath your house. Right. But when you call them lots, you get into setbacks, coverage, you know, frontage, all those other things that go with it. But it's kind of this you know, weird financing things that attorneys came up with, uh, you know, during the housing crisis that help with financing. So that's why uh, we typically go the footprint lot route. But if, if uh, I, I would think that uh, keeping them as uh, denoted footprint lots rather than lots, you know, that would save boundary line adjustments, say, in the future, or, or just kind of denoting them in this own their own box rather than calling them, you know, maybe official lots. So we added a definition of footprint lot years ago as a result of um, up at the town center, the, 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 first, the first building built the um, town mall meeting, and then Ace Hardware and we had different personnel on, and they, they gave the building, and then they gave some parking area, and it was a non-conforming lot, basically. So we ended up getting the legal opinion to, to develop a, a footprint lot a parcel of land which consists solely of the area, area directly under a structure. And that's how we have been going forward with those. So maybe I'd like to have to up. You, have, you do have that sort of where you go out of this single man. Definitely need to put it in the parking, parking lot. Especially if we're going to be dealing with the PUD thing anyway. And on a 
mostly maybe outside of the PUD. Right, right. Because I mean, housing is the crunch right now. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that it, it, you know, is specific to multifamily. Considering shared walls, you would think footprint lots would be sure. more complicated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. So one way of which side she rocks it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to get the line up perfect. Some <laughs> shared walls. Some PUDs, um, like Sharon was saying, that, that they, they have small homes built, but they're they're the pe people pay homeowners, you know, like a regular condo place, but the houses are separate. Yeah. So so the owners just own the home yeah. that 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 the land the piece of land that that house is built on maybe just a few feet yep. front and back and then yep. the rest is common. Correct, and, and that's exactly what we're, we're building. Sometimes like a carriage home they call it as well. So yeah. if, if if in this case, I think if we exercise the flexibility that F gives us. We can specifically say reduce the reduction of the minimum lot size to a footprint lot. Call it out. It's not a waiver. It's, your, it's leveraging the PUD op, the, you know, option, and we're reducing. We're doing what what F, F wants us F wants us to do, which is to reduce the, the minimum lot size. And we just specifically call out that we are reducing the minimum lot size to be a footprint lot. Another thing that came was your, um, if you guys recall the, um, the fountain true lot PUD off Brigham Hill Road, and it was denied because it wasn't clustered enough, the houses weren't too close. They ended up condoizing two houses on one lot because our regs allow that. So that was a way around. So no subdivision. No subdivision. Yeah, con condo plans are fairly, fairly common. And usually, you know, our way around zoning it creates other complex, you know, complicated issues, uh, title issues, but not preferred, not nearly as clean. But, but I think even even though you know the language might lead us, I, I I feel we've got the we've got the language to allow us to reduce the lot size to be a footprint lot. Sorry. We have this on the parking lot for the zoning regs to change. It is as a well, yes. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's, uh, I feel it's there. I have to read it once in a while, I guess. Just that we're at this issue, we're going to put it on our list, our to do list. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so let's roll. You, you good for a day? Or you good more? You good more? No, I think that was, that was it. Let's talk about the, the easement in the open space. Um, yeah, we, we did walk up there. I mean, we took a site visit and, and we hiked up there when there was, I know when they were doing doing a lot of work. So I don't know if they if they removed Phil along 289 or if that, if we walked off from him or we walked onto the 289. I'm guessing you were on 289. So I've done some surveying up there and you got to go good ways uh, off of Patrick's property for it to be hikeable. Yeah, we walked over onto the right of way. Did we? Quite okay. a ways and to get around that first steep section and then we used the road to get around the next two. I, I, I propose then that we, that we get the easement, but make it a conditional that it can be moved when another, an alternative access to the, to the area is provided, um, found or provided. Um, just to note that there's an easement because otherwise it's going to be landlocked. And I think there needs to be, unless you've got an alternate place that you want to get an easement into the, into the, into the property, into that open space, um, I think there has to be at least a, a future access to it, even if it's not buildable yet. Uh, right, they'd still have to do the deeds and all that, just not construct it. And then the day will come if we want it. But I would think if, I mean, it, it, we, we did that with um, the cohort of cohorts and parcel yeah, for the sidewalk. For the sidewalk. Yeah. And we got the easement, but we, there was no way to build it at that point. Right. Yeah. Um, and we've done that in other easements as well. So I, I would like to still get the easement. Yeah. Um, but we included in the findings or including the easement language, and I don't know how to, what that would be, but there could be notation that it could be moved. Yeah, so the culvert situation, that was for the rec path, right? Yeah. Um, here, we're, I, th 
think it's more of a, a recreational. I mean, I know it's for a trail, but it, it's recreational, not on the side of the, you know, on the side of Route 15. Mm -hmm. Is there a way it could be either conditioned or or part of the easement that it would be, you know, not accepted or not used by the town until uh, there are ways to access the easement that are not through trespassing through Patrick's property because that's that's what we're worried about. We're going to give an easement that's landlocked. Hey, maybe it shows up on a town plan, you know, and we already have issues with trespassing and campfires and so find another land. find another option, find another access point into that land. Well, so I guess what we're saying is, or, well, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going back to yeah. two minutes ago, still during COVID, when we had, had all agreed that that probably was not a great place for trail. I know Mr. Schumacher I, brought up that that was, I, and I paid the lawyer afterwards to come up with the conservation easements because we always figured that that Lost Nation Swamp area yeah. and that area is going to be conserved for wildlife, and we didn't want people recreating in there to begin with. But do we need to access into it for for conservation? Not even for recreation. I'll, right. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy to take recreation off the table. Right, and if you want to have, have an access easement for conservation, I'm for that too. We can come right up the uh, we can come right up the power lines for it. That would be the easiest place to do it. Problem solved. Because I still own, I still have an easement on that road, and I still own a hunk of land all the way on the power lines. And we're not dealing with that giant cliff. And now you're actually getting straight shot direct access off a of Discovery Road right into that actual conserved conserved area. And you're not dealing with terrain and roads and we're not I mean, dealing with this. I, I think the point is is to have access. It's not a rec we're not looking at this as a recreation parcel. Okay. You right. mentioned that it was conservation. But we still need to have access to it, and if that's a better a better way to do that, a conservation easement wouldn't show up on a town trail map, say. Yeah, I mean it's not, it's. I think we do we did have the discussion. It wasn't meant to be a, an active trail, but it was still town accessed as needed. Yeah, it was, it was on the map, you know. So I think you had that discussion, John. Yeah, so I mean, it's not going to be, I don't think you want people recreating up there, basically. I mean, it's, they're, whatever. It, it, a conservation access sounds much better to me than a recreation access. And it, that's, if there's no difference between those two, I don't know if they're just a word. I don't know. It's, I'm not an attorney, so I have no idea. But I guess the point is, is that, yeah, we're, we're just never going to be a path built on that. On that, well, that topography is just not going to happen. But you still need to have the connection between the two, and it would be nice, like you said, to keep that access somehow as an easement so that if the town, if it get, is given to the town, or we need to go up and, and deal with it as a natural area or a conservation area, then we should be able to get there. And I agree. I think the power lines would be a great. Is there any conflict with the power companies then? As long as you're not building anything there, you can build all the roads you want, you can build all the trails, you just can't put a structure underneath Velcro. Because we still own the land, they have an easement. And my other question I had was that easement, if we were to do it where it was proposed, the gas company now has their transmission line. They have an easement there. And I don't know how that would be if I could give them an easement over, give you guys an easement over their easement. That would be my question there along the CERC now. Yeah, that came up last time too. Yeah. I remember you mentioning that. But I do know that you can, as long as you're not building anything, because we already do, we already have easements from we built a road now and everything through, and a lot of people have all the neighbors that Skip Lamore's one. He built his driveway. It's all mowed. It's beautiful. It goes right up the Velcro right away. As long as you're not putting a structure, because I guess you can't just obviously, for obvious reasons, can't build a building underneath well, transmission lines. If that can be legally acceptable, that would be that would fit what I was thinking of. I have, an, I have an issue with, I'm confused because if they're, they're all set up and then 99 acres of open space is part of your area, I mean, it, that, that's not town land yet, is it? Because it's not town land. So if it's not town land, people that are moving into these, uh, into this nice development or developing are going to walk their dogs. They're good. These could be people. Uh, no, so, no, so no, there has that, to be some kind of that, association bylaw if you have this. Patty, they're they're, they're not going to.
walk their dogs there. No. No, no unless they have a cliff climbing dog. Yeah. That's the point of this. Oh. You're not getting up there. There's a significant topographic separation. If they go on yeah, the 289 property. Right? Oh. And so it's a conservation easement over Patrick's property. So oh. the town went on the land, and it's a conservation easement. Right. Okay. And then uh, there will be HOA docks as associated with the uh, with the development. HOA docks will be will be part of it. Okay, but I guess what I'm confused about is where is the, the walkable area for for your association for your your bylaws. Uh, so uh, condition of approval uh, will include uh, draft HOA docks that typically get a turn, uh, approved uh, and reviewed by the town attorney. So that would mean that only the people in this, your association can use that area? Nope. The conservation easement is exclusive into the town of Essex, oh, not okay. specific to that HOA. Oh, okay. That's where I was confused. Correct. Yeah. As, uh, the hikers have <laughs> mentioned it's, it's quite a cliff to get up there. For. Right. But I, I, that's where I was confused. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and you know, so and to, to be clear, that the 99 acres is uh, a conservation easement. It, it's okay. not the the uh, space around uh, the the circle. Okay. There is some room there on, on the north side of the road uh, to potentially add a couple more units. The septic soils will support a couple more units. The stormwater system's been designed uh, for a little bit more impervious. So the area just north of the loop road. Is not part of that conservation easement. That's so that's where people right. in your HOA can walk. Correct. Up. Gotcha. Right. I get it. Yeah. Um, we have a hand raised online. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name, but Ravi. Yep. Hi, it's Ravi Vidichandani. I live on Highview Drive across from uh, the proposed development. Uh, just a few questions. Um, one's kind of a clarification. The kind of going back to this um, eight unit development um, originally, like I'm just wondering if the master plan was was actually approved. I mean, I look at line 79 through 84, and there talks about there's talk about like a continued meeting, and then it was never held, and then maybe the application expired. So that was just one of my initial questions: Is that master plan approved? Do you want me to keep, I have a few more questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was wondering about uh, infrastructure. I heard some comments about Vermont gas, and, and I just was wondering if, the, if that would serve these um, units, um, and if, if that would be extended into, into the neighborhood. It's interesting. Our, the mailboxes for Highview Drive are currently right where the um, the proposed road would come off Lamore Road, and I just was wondering if there was some thought about the mailboxes, um, our mailboxes, and then I guess the future ones if, if um, things move forward. Kind of a weird one, but um, as a snowmobiler, I know and appreciate that there's a snowmobile trail um, currently through the property, and I was wondering if there had been thoughts about that. Um, hopefully that can continue. And then, yeah, just, I guess, a comment to the approach to the bridge and any realignment. I think that, you know, if, if things do happen or whatever, um, that's a pretty weird intersection, so I think it, it should be looked at. That's all. Okay. So this is, you know, this is the second discussion about the master plan. And the master plan is a separate document that, in my recollection, you get everybody correct me because my definitions may be off. But the master plan is a is a is a guideline for overall uh, development potential on a parcel. It's not a map. It's not a hard map. It's not a binding map. It's not. It's not. Applications aren't necessarily limited by it. Um, and it's used when there's phases. Of yeah, term. it's usually a longer term roadmap that's established. Um, in fact, one of the one of the elements of this original master plan, if I remember correctly, had like thirty or forty units. Sixty-five. Okay, I remember a whole. You know, it, it's still on there, but 
it's not ever going to be realized. Um, so I, I, I think the question about the master plan we can we can bypass um, since it's as we mentioned to the folks earlier the master plan is not on the table tonight. Um, Vermont Gas, interesting question, and, but that's usually up to Vermont Gas. Um, you're not in. I mean, this is you're not looking to bring Vermont Gas in on this, are you? No, that's a transmission main. It's essentially like a Velco line. You can't just tap it. Yeah. It's thousands of pounds of pressure. <laughs> you can drill them. Yeah, you can try. <laughs> With that. <laughs> Mailboxes, I would assume that if you're putting a road in, you've got to accommodate the mailboxes. Post office likes game yeah, boxes, that, so yeah. I would expect that, but that's their problem. As far as the snowmobile trail, that's a landowner, especially if we're talking, uh, um, I forget the snowmobile association. Vast, if it's a vast thing, that's a private organization that works with the landowners for permission. It's not, we don't, we don't accord them really a, a status at the table. Um, nor are they on established uh, town maps, okay. um, but it's really up to it's up to the landowners to negotiate uh, vast crossings. Has the applicant thought about thought about it? Uh, we can uh, give anybody want a quick synopsis there on this. Sure. If you okay. Would. Well, back before the Cirque Highway was there. Uh, we used to own the property on the other side of the circuit behind Stevens Gas. There was a level crossing that pretty much used to cross over to the old Perizzo barn. Um, when they built the Cirque Highway, they were, of course, eliminated. And through eminent domain, took my 60 acres from my father. They eliminated the level crossing, but we still had the right to maintain the level crossing to have another one. So they moved it to just on our side of the Cirque, where the off-ramp is off, off of 289 down on the Route 2 way. And... And that was our level crossing because uh, the snowmobile trail never came where it is now. It used to cross at this level crossing, cross over onto the Susie Wilson Road side of Route 2A. Uh, the railroad company said, well, since this has been moved, in order for the snowmobiles to use that level crossing and travel along the right of way of the Cirque Highway, they would have to put actual crossing gates, blinking lights, the gates, everything. Apparently, and this was in 1991, apparently it was going to cost, I think, $30,000 at the time. And the vast approached my father and said, you know, we don't have the money for that. Can we continue going along the railroad tracks along your property where the trail never was, cross over the bridge? And my father said, okay. And Dennis at the time said, I'm going to allow you going over the bridge. But as soon as somebody has an accident there, it ends. Thank God there's never been an accident because I know a couple times I'll come over that bridge. A little narrow with snowmobilers. But anyways, we go through this every year. At Dan Raleigh, I gave him permission again this year, obviously, but I told him, I said, you know, you guys have had basically, you know, 30 years now to build that level crossing over there in Gates. You know, at some point this is, you know, going to end because I... I stopped them from traveling over the septic system, or Jarvis' the septic system. That's why they come down where they are now, but now the units are going to be there. So, and I can't move them up again because they'll be driving over the leach fields. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, okay. okay. But they have permission this year, again. Okay, thank you. Any follow-up questions, sir? Um, no. Thank you for uh, contributing. Do we have right, thanks. Do we have additional questions on this, either in the room or online? Hearing none, I'm going to bring this back to the table for a little bit without closing the public hearing. Commissioners, where do you stand? Patty. Um, well, I guess, you know, between the conservation easement and the open space agreement, I, it's been fully reviewed and approved by the community development staff. So, um, I get, now that I understand it a little better, I, it sounds... John? Yeah, I'm, I'm um, 
I'm in pretty good shape. I just have, I want to understand what we're going to do. What's the plan for this access? Do we give up on the, the access uh, on this up along 289 and go for the one under the power line? Or what do we want to do here? Um, and what does that mean for this application? We have to, how much do we have to change? We need to come back. So I'm kind of drifting toward. Or can we just do it right here and right now? And it's not on the plan. So that's a big, that's a, that's a, you know, a positive. I am confused on that. Well, you, there's two places you, you can put it. You, put it, you can have it up along 289, up along the ridge, which is it's not even a ridge, it's a steep drop. Anyway, or you can put it under the power lines. Um, for Mr. Leclerc, but I don't know how we do, how we could do that in this without it being on the plan. Is that legal too? Well, let's 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 make sure we get all the items. That's something to, to drill in on. Okay. What were the other things? I don't have any any issues of changing the condition twelve. I think that was the only real change that we're asking for. And I don't really have any other follow-ups from any of the comments from the public so far. David? I don't think I have any questions or comments. I think as we discussed, I think we, we, we if we're in agreement that the second bullet in our findings that currently says waves, I have a different sentence to propose. That's that. what I was going to say. I think we need to. Do you have it ready? I change it to employing flexibility granted under 6.8 F of the zoning regulations. The Planning Commission favors the creation of footprint lots for the proposed level units. Perfect. Okay. And what was that condition? Uh, changing the second finding around uh, six finding minus 658, but the second Planning Commission finding, striking that second one and replacing it with that sentence. Right. So let's let's talk about the conservation easement. And one thing I'm a little confused of, Catherine, you mentioned have mentioned a couple times, and I'm not sure we're on the same page with with um, is it the 99 acres being transferred to the town? What was you, you mentioned a couple different times that something being given over to the town, and I and I didn't hear that from Patrick. That's why I wanted to. If we're talking about a conservation, you know, a conservation easement, a conservation. Uh, Yep. Declaration of conservation for that 99 acres. So, Catherine, page 259. Is the, um, there was a sheet seven easement mm -hmm. plan. Is that, is that one that we should be looking at? Um, to yeah, I can pull that up. So, I know that, you know, that development is happening on four. Yep. Roughly four acres, and that allow there's 900, 99, sorry, left, 99. So that's that part is considered open space, right? But that is not the same as an open space easement. I think that sheet seven shows. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I think it's right on, on sheet two there because it says approximately the development is approximately taking place on five acres. Yep. And, and it says the remaining land is open, which is true of a PUD with footprint lots condos. But then it's also the 99 acres is the conservation easement over that uh, remaining lands uh, that that's, it's an easement. It's not a, it's not a lot. Okay. So that's, that's okay. So we, so for that conservation land, Conservation overlay. How does yeah. that work? How yeah. about that? That's good. There should be an access easement yeah. for conservation purposes to that remaining lands. And if you're proposing that it follow the power lines, it brings you right in there. Then that to me would be a and suitable. That's that area. Can you bring up sheet seven? 
So there should be an excess season to hold on to the 99 the remaining approximate 99 acre open space. So I'm not seeing sheets seven here. I do have a document that has all the plans. So, so that's the easement plan you're talking about. Well, I think it shows the power line, it shows the open space, it shows, I mean, I think it's the best visual for me. I mean, it's, it's it all out. I'm one. Do you have it up? Can you share? Mm -hmm. I'm not here. Oh, okay. Hold on, I have six years. Can I sit right here? I think what Patrick is proposing is that the non-open space area that he would still own that has frontage on Discovery Road, you're offering them access to that power line correct the right corner. Because yeah. I control all of that. Yeah. So I can do it. Yeah, I probably share this. There you go. So and we're in it for this. Yep. That's the that's the power line right there. And that goes all the way across. And that's actually better because it does go it would it would go all the way across the that portion of the park. And there is some terrain in there, but nothing like I mean it's high, it's actually hikeable terrain. We're not introducing hikeable. Okay, well, just, you you want us not to introduce hikeable. No, I'm just Let's saying. Let's not backtrack. Which is like, it's easier. Never yeah, mind. Yeah. 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 Take his mic away. So I guess I guess what I'm aiming for, and this is what I want board members to, to chime in and applicant and staff, is acknowledgement of the conservation access easement or an easement access easement into the conservation overlay section whatever 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 phrasing needs to be the, to, to yeah. capture that yeah as long as it's for more maintenance of the conservation land or I don't care if that, that, that would be fine if it's and that's fine what are we calling this the acreage that's being turned what are we calling this space that you're turning over to the town not turning over to the town. So that's, that's it's a easement. It's conservation easement. Just a conservation easement. So you're not turning. Not necessarily over. turning over to anybody. You're just giving an easement over that acreage. Right. Correct. So can I have a follow-up question? So it's warned as an eight-lot PUD. So you've got seven. The ninth is the remaining one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you have eight. Eight, eight units. Eight dwelling units. Yeah, correct. Eight footprint lots. Okay. And the ninth is the remaining land. And of that remaining land, a portion of it is covered by a conservation easement. Correct. So we want an access easement under the power lines for maintenance and conservation purposes to that conservation easement land. I, I say this gets punted to... This is sketch. We're like beating a horse here. This no, gets it's actually not sketch. This is preliminary. This is preliminary. So we can we can continue this. This is final. Well, and you can choose to just approve it as preliminary and come back or continue. Continue is easier. Yeah, yeah. It would be easier just to, just right. to tune up all the language. I'm sorry, John. So what is shown on the plans is the original access easement along the Sir Highway. And what, what you were saying was, is if we can't find another spot to access, then that's acceptable because it's the only way to go. So if maybe the condition can be worded, if you know, or, or say you know, conservation. Yeah, the conservation easement, you know, should be dedicated as shown on plat sheet two, unless an alternative uh, location located under the Velco power lines can be coordinated with planning and zoning staff or somewhere along those lines. So you know, at least you're getting, if there turns out to be a problem going the other way, you're at least getting what's shown on the plan now, and that is on. The plan. And if it turns out we can't go the other way. That's the only way. Bottom line is that we need an easement into the conservation parcel. Right. The con 
conservation lands. And if there already is an easement on the plan, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards agreeing with you. Yeah. We, we accept that easement that's already there and add in a condition that, or add to that condition. We want to modify E, 6E. I mean, if we st step away from the language, you know, easements and all this crap, and what we're essentially talking about is that this PUD has 99.1 acres of open space. Right now on the plans, the access to that is along a cliff along 289. We're asking the applicant to consider, in exchange for eliminating that access easement along 289 along the cliff, to give us some other access for conservation purposes into the property over his lands, access through discovery. That's essentially what we're talking about, right? Yes. So we're just going to figure out a way to word that. You just stated the finding that goes into the Planning Commission finding. Well, I can't remember that. That's well, I can capture it. Karen, you should share it. Is that her name? Sharon? Yeah. Okay. 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 So are you asking for that easement to come from Discovery Road? Uh, no, I was just trying to summarize what I think it is we're trying to, so that we're all in agreement that we're getting, you know, 99.1 acres of open space and that we want some way to get in there that makes sense. That's let's, even, let's, yep. let's even rephrase that. We're not getting. He's designating yep. 99 acres of open space, yeah. and we want to maintain access. We want to establish access to it so that it can be accessed for if needed. And there's no concept, there's no confusion about that. Yeah. Um, so what's the condition, John? You had it called out the existing condition. It was uh, 6E. You want to modify and say something like an access easement is. We need an access easement to provide access to the conservation area or over, over the power line. I don't know. I don't want, no, I don't want to be too specific. I'm so we're, we're, we can strike the word pedestrian recreation easement. Yes. And add draft, draft easement D for proposed 20-foot wide conservation easement along the southern boundary of Vermont 289 unless the applicant can provide an alternate location for 20 foot wide conservation easement. Right. The only thing I would say is, is uh, 99 acres are open space is part of the development, but not all 99 acres are for the conservation. Right. If you looked at the, the uh, conservation easement is within that 99 acres. And if you look at the master plan, there's a few extra lots to go on one of the private drives there. So. That's all I want to try to focus it on right. access to the conservation. Correct. Business. Yeah, right. I think so. I think. That's I think right. we can strike the term 99. Yeah. I but it so. is it is part of that ninth lot. Right. But we're we're focusing on on establishing yeah. an easement to access that conservation Correct. area. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can, can that connection come from one of those proposed future lots if they come to be? What's already been proposed, which is yeah. the 20 foot, yeah. you know, at, at the, that's the safeguard, yeah. That's there, yeah. We have it, it's it's not necessarily functional, but it's there. And just put in this that an alternate, um, rec recreate, not recreation, an alternate conservation easement would be could be submitted to staff for review and approval, yeah. How's that? You want to take, assume the responsibility for that? Well, if it's a, can you do, is that a finding? Well, that would be a condition. The finding is that it should be, should. Should be submitted. Yeah. Why? If it, oh, excuse me, that, that was combative. Um, <laughs> if the first thing is that we've got one there, if an alternate, it, it's an alternate easement could be submitted. We already have the 20-foot easement as part of the condition of a long to deny. The option. The op oh, maybe we put it that way then. The applicant has the option of submitting an alternate conservation easement location to staff for approval for staff approval. Yeah. Does that makes. I mean, is that that puts it? 
I don't think it needs to come back because we're really looking for. You don't even have to tie it to the Velcro either. Yes. Well, that's why I just said yeah, alternate yeah. location. Yeah, I think that's good. That 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 you you were correct, and that it's already on the on the in the form for in the plan for tonight. David, does that sound a reasonable approach? Yeah. John. Yeah. Patty. Sure. Okay. Do we have anything else we need to, to, to touch on this? I'm going to stop sharing. Go back to look at participants. Do we have anybody? So the public hearing is still open. Are there any additional comments or questions that folks want to offer? I see none online. I see none in the room. And I would take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. I said it too late. I did it. It's not a question. Yeah, well. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Public hearing is closed. Commissioners, we have, we have options in front of us right now. If we're feeling confident in this, then, then we can move it. If anybody has any concerns or questions, then I would suggest that we look at continuing it because there are only four of us tonight. So it must be a, it must be a unanimous vote tonight, one way or the other. Um, and quite frankly, it's very awkward if we vote in the negative and a vote you know, is rejected and we have to, because it's still active on the table. So straw poll time. This is just a question. Do you have any concerns that would prevent you from you know, moving this tonight? Patty? No concerns. John? No, I'm good. David? OK. Then let's, unless there's additional points to discuss, let's go for a motion, John. Whoops. Did I say it like that? <laughs> uh, I move we approve the uh, boundary adjustment between Linda LeClerc, one LeClerc Woods, and Dilton and Sandra Jarvis, that little more road and preliminary and final public hearing, um, proposing an eight lot planned unit development, uh, PDR, on a portion of the remaining undeveloped lands known as one LeClerc Woods in the AI zone, tax map 73, parcel one. Um, with uh, language as we discussed, um, changing the second bullet in the findings as well as adding um, a finding which I can't remember the language of, but Chair and I believe you captured it um, regarding this is, is regarding the easement is what we were talking about, right? And that finding can we remember it, now. It, the, we had a couple findings. One, we were changing the PD language right. that David had. To capture the footprint. And then acknowledging that we wanted an easement into the conservation easement, ac uh, an easement, yeah. access easement into the conservation. So that we can change 6E um, to the language that we all discussed about um, getting the access easement to provide access into that open <laughs> space, um, which is not 99 acres, but just the open space. Um, and changing condition 12 um, to say that the, uh, the fees will be paid after first CO. And I believe that's all I had on my list. I'm good. I'll second. Okay, we'll move. Seconded. Any further discussion? <clears throat> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take five. Right. Welcome back, everyone. We've got one final plan on our agenda this evening, our application. Um, and that is, this is a continued sketch plan public hearing from 825 for Pinewood Holdings. Uh, Brian Marcott proposed 34 units development, PUDR. And I'm not going to read the rest of it. Too many words. Um, Catherine, you want to catch us up? Or I do. You wanna... Yeah, okay. I feel like this was a very small uh, bit of the application that was the reason why it was continued. So I don't think we need to belabor the whole um, sketch plan contents again. Okay. But in, so in August, you did hear this application, and during that sketch plan hearing, 
there was concern about the um, the private drives that had an access of four and in one case five um, different or separate units. And Public Works was against that uh, because it didn't comply with their regulations and um, and also the staff was saying that it didn't necessarily comply, but it's a PUD, so there's some flexibility in, in that. So the staff was directed to talk, uh, community development staff was directed to talk to public work staff, potentially the town attorney to, to figure out if, was there some way forward. Public work staff uh, has agreed that there, there actually is um, in their public work specs and allows to allow this sort of thing. So it's there's a, um, I think it's A11 uh, illustration that allows for um, units off of one drive. So they have consented to say that they they would accept this sort of development. They would not accept five, but they would accept four. And uh, community development staff agrees with that. I think we're fine with that, the four and not five. And my suggestion that it's in the staff report is to be very specific about why you would be allowing that. It's not just because um, it's a good thing or public works that says it so, but because our um, the PUD regulations allow for that flexibility. And so that, that is laid out in your staff notes. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Catherine? Uh, yeah. Um, the, on uh, the revisions to the design of private roadways that meet the requirements that you just discussed, um, do they have to be specific to the Essex standard specifications for construction, according to you know their public works spe standard specific specifications for construction? Yeah. So that the A11. Detail is taken from that the public works specifications. Oh, okay. So it's it's within it's a description or a you know a, oh, okay. a detail of how you can do a private drive. So there's two different ones. There's one that shows two and there's one that shows four. So we we can use the four. Mm. Oh, I have one more question. Okay. Um, this, this one I studied the most, th this plan. Um, the, um, because the pr private drive number one that leads to, um, that has one, two, three, and four, I know that that they're, they need a special permit, I guess. I don't know if it's an environmental permit or some kind of permit, conservation or um, environmental permit or something. I read, um, but I guess my question is, who's going to plow if that's not really a, ta a town road, it's private? Who's going to maintain that road? Uh, it would not be up to the town. I mean, we would want to make that clear in any sort of conditions that the town does not intend to take that over. You know, it's not built to a, a public road. Same with the private road number two that leads to right. five, six... Seven, eight, nine. Okay. So if it's if, if, if it's a non-town road, there's state statute that requires that. Well, they'll have to have a road sharing agreement in place. But if there wasn't, state statute covers the absence of one and requires that the participants in a shared driveway or shared roadway share equally in their proportion of the maintenance and upkeep of a oh, okay. roadway. So there's statute that protects them. Oh, great. So last time we were in front of you, uh, we talked uh, a lot about a revised layout. Um, you know, we, we've taken ex extensive steps to minimize impact of steep slope. A lot of our conversation was around that. Seemingly, the Planning Commission was okay with uh, the new layout. Uh, we agreed.
street to show more grading where the lots are sort of things. But uh, at the end, we chose, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, to, to take a continuance over, over an approval uh, in order to gain more clarity on this driveway standard. So since then, we've had very great constructive conversations with planning and zoning and public works. and and. Uh, you know, town staff does agree that the PED standards do allow the flexibility for four units off a of private drive in certain instances, not everywhere in town, but in certain instances. Um, obviously, the standards too. So, in this case, we're asking the Planning Commission, as part of a PUD approval, for four units off of two uh, private driveways. We will likely eliminate uh, lot five in order to comply. Uh, with the four unit count on the, uh, the eastern uh, private drive. Right now we're showing five, so we'd have to get rid of one of them. I think that one probably makes the most sense. Um, so we're, we're asking the Planning Commission to, for finding at sketch, uh, so we can move into a, a set of preliminary fully designed plans uh, to okay uh, that using four units off a of private drive in the R2 district, in the, in the sewer core, uh, promoting uh, you know uh, the conservation of natural features and steep slopes, uh, that four units off a of private drive is appropriate uh, for Pinewood. You don't want to make it more complicated than that tonight. Not unless you want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Commissioners, questions? Um, not, not about those drives, no. Well, it's asking questions. This is, it, it, it's okay. Um, I have an issue. Sketch. So if you get rid of five, I, I didn't know that. So because 5, 10, 12, and 13 are on steep slopes. So you're going to get rid of five, that's what you're saying? So if we were to meet the four units off the right. private drive standard, we're currently showing five, so we could get rid of... Uh, the five is the one with the steep five, slope. But, but I think five makes the most Yeah, because that's on a steep slope, so I was just going to say that's a good choice. Yeah. But my other question is, what about 10, 12, 13 on a steep slope? And um, the cul-de-sac, um, I know that there is... Well, well, it's kind of vague about wet, uh, wetland two, wetland two on, on the um, biofinder map. Um, but the water coming into that cul-de-sac, that little thing at the end where the, the triplexes are, is uh, is that going to be an issue with you know erosion and, and everything, water? Sure. So I, I'll take the cul-de-sac first. So diverting water will be certain engineering decisions I'll have to make as we move into design plans. We're not showing anything now of how that would be accomplished uh, until we move into the design phase of the project. Right now we're just looking for more conceptual, uh, larger themes, but that is definitely something that we'll have to consider as we move forward and, okay. and uh, you know, we can look at closer uh, the next step. Uh, as far as uh, unit, I think you said lots 10, 13, some of the ones that are shown with the blue shading for... 10, uh, 12, and 13. Yep, for what Essex uh, uh, defines as a steep slope. When we were here last time, uh, you know, we talked about how steep slopes should be avoided, but that doesn't mean that you cannot impact them at all. And we are doing, in my opinion, a very good job at avoiding steep slopes. And we've agreed to show grading for some of the more and more uh, steep single family lots, something that we typically wouldn't do, right? Typically, we just show a single family lot. And as long as you build within the envelope and meet public work standards, you'll get a building permit. So we've agreed to show more detail on, say, those three lots. Uh, to show that we can uh, not impact uh, an exorbitant amount of steep slopes. And uh, I, I think if you look at, um, you know, not, not just uh, the one sheet three, but if you look at sheet two and three, you know, it's a, it's a hundred acre parcel. You know, we're zooming in on, on three lots. To, to say we're not avoiding steep slopes, uh, I think, he, even with those two, uh, three lots, is, uh, uh, I think, a significant understatement. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, got, I, I was laying out the maps while you were talking. I'm, I'm listening. John? Uh, good. Okay. I'd 
like to, and Catherine, this probably goes back to you and, and David since he's our literary agent. Um, underneath our findings, that's where I'd like to capture the language like we did in the last app, that the PUD standards allow us to make the changes. I don't want to say waiver and also capture that public works is in support of this uh, revised uh, layout as reflected in the uh, plan, updated plan. We're moving five. Again, I, I think the, 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 one of the focus right now for me is that we are consistent in when we, when we accept something under a PUD, we state it, that we accept it as a PUD, not a waiver. Right, and I think in this case, we're not using, we would not be using the same PUD flexibility language. It yeah. would be different. Whatever the right, I mean, I, I would look to you to insert the language that reflects, I mean, you, you basically had it outlined in the staff report. As far as I'm concerned, we can take that language and put it in. As long as we don't, we, we indicate that this is within the guidelines of the P application of the PUD um, options. Right. So you. So it's generally shown on uh, line three sixty nine. We're starting at three sixty nine. So the zoning direction. So new regulation section 6.8 L. Yep. And then it's because the project is proposed, oh, that should be as, not at, um, as a PUD are located in the sewer core, is in the R2 district, an area where growth is encouraged and designed, the design protects steep slope, keeping impervious area to a minimum. So you've got it laid out here as to why we should do that, but it's also indicated in this that the staff recommends. So right. this is where, in the Planning Commission findings, I would just say the Planning Commission accepts the staff recommendation or agrees with the staff recommendation as stated in on 370, however we want to do that. But there's also language, I thought I saw language, that Public Works was in support of this, and that I think is important to capture as well. Yep. Okay. Yes, I think they're, they're men out. Line 364, public work supports allowing four dwellings on one drive conforming to construction until A11. Because that shows that we're not just, you know, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. pulling a rabbit out of their hat. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, David? I mean, <coughs> John, Patty, is that? Yeah, I found it, yep. Now, at this point, the public hearing is still open, so I would entertain questions from anybody in the room or anybody online, as soon as I can find that again. I'll go to the participants. So if anybody online has any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, MK. I have a, a little tight next to the proposed development. And actually, Brian actually built my house a few years ago. That's where I live. Uh, one item, I don't know whether it was discussed in the last meeting. I want to hear um, uh, if there was any conclusion on this item or not. Uh, one item that some of the neighbors over here talked about was connecting this public roadway that's proposed here all the way up to the Timberlane Drive. And uh, that will that do three things. It will distribute the traffic uh, onto both sides instead of funneling all the traffic onto the corner of Stonebrook and Evergreen Drive. Second item it will do would be safety in case uh, the main road gets blocked by it tree or something power line, then uh, there is an emergency access available uh, into that part of the neighborhood. And uh, and I would say if that public roadway is extended all the way to Timberlane Drive, some of these, uh, these steep slope lots could potentially be moved right next to that 
extended road where the steep the slopes are not as steep. So that's my recommendation. I wanted to hear what uh, uh, what you guys think. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go away because I'm not sure we're 100 percent clear in what you're uh, suggesting. Go ahead. Um, isn't there? Um, I, I read that the, hit, the road can't be more than 900 feet long, or something. The, the public road, the public roadway to the. Um, that's a uh, that's a non through road. That's a road that ends in a cul-de-sac. Oh, oh, that's a okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. So I'm 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 confused at where you were sir where you were looking um, to have the road connect. Maybe you need to go to the different scratch scratch where instead of ending this on the cul-de-sac, it continues on and meets the uh, Timberlane Drive. Yes, I have that shows that overlay to this. Yeah. This is Timberlane right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So the talk, he's talking about it coming this way. Yeah. And the topography looks on lots. Uh, it would have to go through two lots, and there's no opening on Timberlane. Yeah, one of them is existing. Those are proposed lots. Though. Proposed lots, correct. Are pretty. I don't know. The topography looks. I'll let Brian answer. The topography looks pretty, pretty. It seems like this has come up for discussion yeah. also, the other end. <laughs> so, yeah. our, our original plans, when we submitted preliminary plans from the previous uh, version of this development, we did show a through road. Now, the planning commission did not deny that application, but the feedback we were getting from the room was that it was impacting too many steep slopes, so the application was withdrawn. To impact less steep slopes, you've now proposed a 900 foot cul de sac. Okay. I knew that was ringing a bell somewhere. So I think, sir, the answer to your question is that the continuation would be severely impactful environmentally. And a lot of your neighbors brought up concerns about. The, the runoff and erosion and so forth. So this was an attempt to, part of the attempt to minimize and mitigate that, those, those erosion concerns. Correct, yep. There were other two private but built to public cul-de-sacs that were proposed that have been pulled back to these four-way, uh, four-unit driveways. So a number of steps have been taken uh, to reduce the impact. I mean, this eliminated a huge amount of impact from what we originally looked at. To Correct. Point. In order to justify building the road, you have to put lots along them and uh, it was uh, determined uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago that that likely wouldn't have been supported by the planning commission. Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah, it, it, it does. I guess the, you trade off one versus the other. My, 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 my suggestion was was uh, maybe moving these uh, steep slope lots on the side of that road. And when I look at the topography myself, the existing roadway goes through a much steeper slope than the extension would be. Like, if you look at right next to the cul-de-sac, there are much steeper grades right next to that compared to if you just keep on extending. That's what I see, but, but uh, yeah. I'm looking right now real quick, see if we get numbers up on this. Anyways, I think, I think to your point, sir, I think that was hashed out to some degree in a previous submission, so. So yeah, far, previous, go ahead. Previous, I think one of the main concerns was was uh, the lots that were built on both sides of the extended road. 
work on the steeper grade. My point on uh, for the new revised plan is it is uh, is extending the road, which will not as much impact the, the steep slope unless you start building lots on both sides. And when you have the extended road, you will have opportunity to build, to move some of these steep slope lots into the flat of land. Because there is flat land on, on the side of the extended road if you, if you choose to do that. Isn't the land flatter? Yes. Yeah. It's significant. So, sir, can you state your name, please? Uh, my name's Peter Gray. Thank you. Uh, I live up in the development area. Okay. So, I, th I think it, it's it's okay to bring this up, but I think we do have a plan in front of us this evening as sketch, and I know this has been before the Lord. Many of the plan you know, phases have been before the before the all of them have been before the commissions. Um, I'm not recalling immediately, but this looks I don't recall it directly why we why we chose to go this. I know there's an impact. What was some of the discussion over the degree of impact by extending this road down beyond I'm pretty sure there was also commentary by most, some of the neighbors on this end of Timberlane about the impact of having the road come down right past their houses. I think it was more a general discussion that Public Works and uh, previous uh, zoning, planning and zoning uh, folks that uh, you know did not see uh, that we were minimizing impact to the extent that we could. A, there's a good cut to make that turn uh, on the back of uh, Timberlake there. Big cut, big fill, uh, and we wouldn't entertain doubling the size of the road for the same amount of units. That would make the project infeasible. So, and I think that's what this gentleman was suggesting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at this. There's a 380 there and a 400 here. It's, yeah, it's and a 360 and a 380. Right. It looks and like it's a... It would be steep just to put a road in it, too. Okay. It would be, yeah. So, sir, I think with, with regards to this, you know, thank you very much for bringing this forward. I think we've heard from the applicant, the applicant heard from previous planning commissions that that's not a direction that we would be entertaining at this point. Neither is that a direction that you're offering at this point. No. That'd be the answer you're looking for, sir, but, but that's where I think we're going to get to tonight. Thank you. Let's see. Anyone else online have a question about this? Thank you for sticking around with us. All right. I see no more questions. No more hands raised online. And... Oh, uh, my MK still has his hand up. Okay. Sir, in the room, did you want to offer any additional commentary? No, I just kind of try okay. to clarify where some of the flatter land is. Okay. It is a pretty narrow, steep path. Get down. There's also class two wetland at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Barriers to success. All right, with that, I would look for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Public hearing is closed. Commissioners, we've, we've looked at this a fair amount. Um, we've talked about PUD language and the findings, which David's sort of been tweaking. Are there any other items of concern at this point that we want to bring up or hash out? Remembering, again, that this is sketch. So <coughs> come back again. Can I mention something? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the problem for the the triplexes, those four brown brown ones at the end of the cul-de-sac, 18 to 22. Um, 
I guess you said you were going to look into that class two wetland, and I, um, I, I didn't know if those would be impacted yep. because that wetland is just above. If you look at the map this way, it's just north of the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And it would flow right in between all those guys. So uh, the way the state uh, takes jurisdiction over wetlands, they have class twos and class threes. Uh, functions and values is an argument for class two versus the three. Sizes is also a big indicator. Hydraulic conductivity is another one. There's a bunch of stuff that goes into it. So the wetland that's shown basically underneath the cul-de-sac is what the state defined as a class three wetland, meaning non-jurisdictional. You don't need a permit to impact it. The function and values don't warrant conservation. Uh, class two wetland is the one behind unit 19, and those have a 50-foot buffer associated with them. Those are protected by the state, and we are not showing impact to the 50-foot buffer around the Class II wetland east of the triplex. Oh. And we have a classification report from our original submission two years ago with the state uh, verifying those classifications. So we hire an ecologist to go out and delineate the wetlands. They bring the state out, and the state verifies the location and the classes of those wetlands. So you you hired some geotechnical engineer to wetland do all ecologist. Oh, uh, okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know you did that. That's cool. Good. With that, um, David, you've been typing. Do you want to share the language that you're proposing for the additional finding? Uh, so under additional findings, uh, based on the recommendations of staff and public works and the flexibility granted under 6.8F of the zoning regulations and the public works specifications, the Planning Commission supports up to four dwelling units on the private drive. Two. On the, public, on the two private drives. Two private drives, sorry. On the two private drives. Okay. So that's our that's part of our discussion. Anybody have any issues? I'm going to say two, up to four dwelling units each on the two private drives. Yeah. So, so. Those two things are perfect. Okay. Then is anyone ready to offer a motion? So uh, I move we approve the sketch plan public hearing um, for Pinewood Holdings LLC. Um, proposed 34 unit plan unit development, um, development in the residential yeah, PUDR located at 18 and 30 Timberland Drive. Um, parcel IDs as they're showing in the agenda. I'm not going to read those out. Um, with the uh, language that David just read in our findings, and uh, no other changes uh, staff report has written. Awesome. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Next on our agenda are the minutes from October 27, 2022. I move approval. I'll second approval. Get there so I can just at least make sure they up. Does anybody want to offer any amendments, changes, corrections to the minutes as presented? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes carry 4 0. We have other business. I do. Oh, go ahead. Oh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, just wanted to let you all know that we are in the planner position. Um, with the with the staff current staff conditions and the holiday season coming upon us and so forth, I 
I'd like to suggest that we sort of pivot a little bit on our planning initiatives and at least for the time being let the primary work group focus be just the town plan efforts. Um, that doesn't mean anybody has to stop doing it, that things are going on, that everybody's welcome to continue, but I think with, we're, we're running into conditions or, or situations we have issues with getting commitment from the PC, from the staff, and from other, other boards and committees. And as we stated when we started the process, we might have to flex a little bit. And I think these are, yeah, these are just minutes. I, I think we need to, at this point, just sort of, in order to keep anything moving forward, I think we sort of need to narrow our focus down. And that means maybe first of the year, we kick things back into gear. Um, and at that point, we see what, what mood people are in and what, what we think we can get our feet under. And maybe we aim to have a, a set of zoning regulation updates ready for March. Small bites right now, but I don't think we're going to get anywhere really the rest of the year. But I think we should keep the town plan process going because that's been a, I think that's been one group that's that's been meeting regularly. Um, we only have two more meetings, right, before the new year? Two, no. One. 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 What, what's the thing with December? We have, one meeting in, we have one meeting in November and we have one meeting in December. Because of that holiday. So I think it's just, I'll get together with Josh and we come up with language to share out with the rest of the commissions. But no, I don't think there's any fault on anybody's part. There's no, it's just, we've been trying to get this going, but it, it, it's, there's been a lot of outside influences. I think it's just in order to provide focus and allow staff to get their feet under them, especially if you get a new planner coming on board. For sure. um, you know, I think it, it's, it's a little much to try to, Dis, you know, keep this distributed process moving forward. I would say, though, that the Act 178 group that you all are joining is... 178. 171. Oh, group. got it. Yep. Call it the wrong name. It's all right. I was going ahead a few more acts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the time we're done, that so might yeah, be right. Yeah, there on that. 171. So, but yeah. 171 is, I think, in support of the town plan. Yep. Um, so I think that's an important thing. Yep. Left sort of the, the next steps to me, and he was going to do some introduction, but I don't think he did. Okay. You, were, you weren't here last time, but nope. I, I read to the group what the I, notes were. I read that in the minutes. Oh, okay. I said I'm speaking for you because you weren't here. That's okay. I'll let you, do, let you get away with this one. Time. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't go to the thing yesterday, 171. I missed it. Um, oh gosh, I miss us. There's, there's another one. It's, it's December seventh. I can, I can. Okay. Well, it. anyway, I'm supposed to be facilitating that. In, so that in Derek's place. I think, like I said, if anything is we'll in motion going. and people want to keep things moving, that's great. We'll keep going. Um, but I think our, our our focused attempt to get work groups going, I think it would be best right now just to to reconvene the first of the year for those groups that haven't gotten traction. Okay. Well, yeah. That, that lets everybody sort of take a breath. Um, and really, we've been the only one setting our own you know, targets. So I don't think there's any. The only outside target we have to hit is the town plan update for 2024. So I think there's value in keeping that alive. 